I want to welcome each individual who uh, have decided to worship with us today, whether you are in-house or online, it is always a delight to have you. Today is a special day, and uh, we have come to celebrate together. For the next few minutes, we will focus on the cost of freedom. The cost of freedom. Let us bow our heads. Loving Father, as we open your word, we invite your spirit, your Holy Spirit to be in our midst. Pray that you will speak to our hearts. May I not be seen, but may Christ be lifted up, we pray, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We are celebrating this month, Black History Month, and we usually focus on the fact that as a people, once enslaved, now we are, to a large extent, free. Not completely but to a large extent, free. But as we celebrate, I wonder how many of us spend some time thinking about the cost of freedom. We're enjoying the benefits of those who have gone before. And as we go through this brief discussion today, this afternoon, we will discover that freedom does not come without a sacrifice. Uh, the Bible tells us that the greatest miracle in the Old Testament was the Exodus. God delivered his children out of bondage. This was accomplished by the blood of the lamb. And the lamb, as we studied, is a representation of the paschal lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Bible says that while the children of Israel were there in Egypt, God heard their cry. He saw their affliction. I'd like us to understand that nothing escapes the view of God. There is no place to hide from him. He sees all things. He sees our heartaches. He sees our tears. He sees our burdens and our brokenness. He sees our ills and our fears. He sees our griefs and our worry. He sees our despair. Loves his own. And he wants to carry every care. The Bible says, notwithstanding the challenges of Israel, God still saw them as his people. 
said, I've heard your cry. I know your sorrow. And I will deliver you. The Bible tells us that God spake unto Moses. He said, now listen, tell the children of Israel that I am about to do a great thing. Be prepared for deliverance. Be prepared to experience the freedom that ultimately comes from me. The Bible says that God instructed them to take a lamb, kill the lamb. And as, as we look at the description, the Bible says it is not just an ordinary lamb. Lamb must be without blemish. Lamb must be just a year old. The lamb must be one that signify the holiness of Christ. And having slain the lamb, take the blood, put on the lintel of the doorpost, so that as I come through to deliver, I will see the blood and I will pass over. Freedom comes as a result of what? Sacrifice. No sacrifice, no freedom. And as we reflect this month, history tells us that so many of our forefathers have given their lives so that we today can experience some measure of freedom. You know, we don't spend much time reflecting. We just take things for granted. And just as we take things for granted because we did not have to pay the price when it comes to our spiritual freedom, many of us, we take it for granted because we do not truly understand what it costs Bible says that it cost all of heaven in the fullness of time. God sent forth his son, born of a woman. And he came and he died in our place. He died on the cross. He died the death that we should have died. So that we may experience the life that he possessed. John says while he was there. Baptizing by the river Jordan. He beheld Christ. And he declared behold the lamb of God. The Lamb of God, the Paschal Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Through his blood, his death, we are made free. And the Bible declares that whomever the Son had set free, he is free indeed. We are no longer captive. To sin. We are free in the righteousness of Christ. 
What, what, what does that mean really? When we are free in Christ, it does not mean we are at liberty to do as we please. Being free in Christ means that we have surrendered ourselves to live in harmony with his will. So we are no longer captives to sin. The things we used to do, we do them no more. Because God, through Christ, has broken the chains that held us captives. The question that we need to answer today, am I truly free in Christ? The Bible admonishes us and shares with us the cost of freedom. Our freedom, spiritual freedom, came at the price of the death of Christ. No matter what we did, no matter how many lambs we could have slain, that would mean absolutely nothing except for the death of Christ on Calvary. And so as we come to celebrate today, we are celebrating the freedom that we are experiencing in Christ. Spiritual freedom that is above and beyond all other freedom that can be offered. Physical freedom has its place. But there is nothing like spiritual freedom. When we are made free in Christ, when the bondage of sin is no more, when we can live in the light of his love and his amazing grace. Freedom takes us not from the bondage that we talk about when it comes to slavery as we heard in the past. But slavery, but freedom takes us ultimately to eternity. There's one thing that I'd like us to reflect on today. When Christ delivered Israel from Egypt, he could have led them by a direct route to the promised land. He could have taken them through the land of the Philistine, but he decided to take them through the wilderness. And I wonder why he did that. He wanted to re-educate the children of Israel. And for them to understand what it meant and what it cost for their deliverance. So they would have time to reflect and you know, sometimes when we hear about the fact that Christ is coming again and we say, well, we have been hearing that for so long. But whether or not we are convinced of it, that is the reality. 
and we might understand that yes we are going through our wilderness experience so that we may have the time to reflect on the cost of our freedom that has been guaranteed through Christ and his shed blood. Let us not take it for granted. Every opportunity we have, we ought to be able to reflect and to declare, thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Through your blood, I am made free. And when we understand the measure of our freedom and what it cost, we will be able to live lives that are in harmony with the will of God. It will not be that we try to live a certain life on Sabbath, but we will daily reflect on the sacrifice of Christ. And the more we reflect on his sacrifice, the more we recognize our freedom that has been guaranteed through his death, the more we will be transformed. And the more we become like Jesus, the more we will have to celebrate. Because that's what our Christian journey is all about celebrating the freedom that God has won for us through Christ. And so we have come today to celebrate. Bible talked about the Passover. This was done in Israel every year, reminding them of their deliverance. We, we do this quarterly. It would be a sad thing if we only depended upon the quarterly experience of the communion service to reflect on our spiritual freedom. The Bible says, as off as you do this, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. You don't have to wait on the communion. But we ought to daily reflect on the life of Christ. So that indeed we will order our lives according to his divine will. We will celebrate our freedom. That comes only through his death. So as we come, it is my prayer that we will daily reflect on the cost of our freedom. The more we reflect on the cost of our freedom, the more we become like Christ. The more our worship becomes spontaneous the more we will be able to want to celebrate and to shout and to share what God has done for us through Christ. The more we reflect on that, we don't have to wait on the preacher to tell us. It becomes spontaneous because we're daily experiencing and living the freedom that will ultimately Lead us to eternity. I am free. I'm free. I am free in Christ. Nothing will hold me captive. Nothing will hold me in bondage. I'm free. Set free by the blood of Christ. And as a result... I will live in the light of that freedom. Not just about coming to church on Sabbath. It is about recognizing 
what God has done in your life, in my life, through the gift of his son, Jesus. This is the greatest sacrifice yet. It goes to show the measure of his love for you and for me. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life, not only for his friends, but for those who considered him enemies. I'm so glad that Christ did not wait on me to become his friend. Even when I was his enemies, he still shed his blood on my behalf. Oh, had it not been for the man called Jesus, had it not been for the place called Mount Calvary, oh, where would we be today? I trust that we will reflect on this sacrifice daily. And as we reflect, we will celebrate. And as we celebrate, we will share. And as we share, others will come to know him, whom to know is life eternal. I trust that we will be washed, made clean through his blood, still rejoicing that the blood that was shed on Calvary way back then still has the power to break the bondage, to set us free, to wash us, make us clean, and to prepare us for his kingdom. May none of us today be missing, but because of this sacrifice on Calvary, we will be allowed to enter into his eternal kingdom, not only for time, but forever. As we contemplate monthly, Black History Month, let us contemplate daily the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary. And as we contemplate this daily, we will be amazed to see the transformation that comes as a result. Let us be grateful. Let us not take things for granted. Let us recognize how valued we are in his sight. The fact that he has spit it all and as a result, we can experience salvation full and free. May this be our experience as we go through the communion exercise. May we take the time to truly reflect on the cost of our freedom that Christ has paid on our behalf.